This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studios, the the packed Mayhem Studios. Wait, I gotta go throw a shot over here. Look at the biggest in-house audience. Hello, everybody out there. We, 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 they're waving for you guys on audio. Let them hear you. Wait. Hey, there you go. <laughs> and who is the big draw? We'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, but first, please check out everything Indie Mayhem Show on your iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and YouTube page, as well as everything over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Over 150 strong, uh, great interviews from all the way back in the day. Uh, episode 3 with Jock Sampson still holds up, uh, so please go check all that stuff up. You know, of course, it's before he was Air Jock, too. Uh, but uh, go check it out and support the show, Patreon.com slash wrestling ma'am show and support our friends that we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast with me today he's been uh, showing up a bit doing the backstage interviews and so much more at the international wrestling cartel uh but he has a very interesting history of how he got into how he even before he even found us at the iwc i guess uh nick lindell is help, uh, joining us here in studio how you doing good Good. It's awesome. A little the pressure here. Oh, no big pressure yet. Yeah, audience here. It just you know the um, <laughs> the 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 uh, tens in studio and and more t- well tens around the world. Uh, so, <laughs> well, first of all, we like to start off these shows with a little bit of an icebreaker. Uh, so, tell us what's kind of your earliest memory of pro wrestling. Maybe getting into it. Oh man, I remember um, it was elementary school. A uh, couple of the, you know, my friends were talking about it. I was never really introduced to it uh, until uh, my one friend brought home a VHS tape of WrestleMania 14. First thing I remember seeing was the Undertaker WrestleMania entrance with the, you know, the the lightning and the thunderbolts and everything. It was actually the, the match he faced Kane, and they did the whole Pete Rose tombstone and everything. And <laughs> and I remember, um, you know, thinking like, oh, this is kind of cool. And then. I remember hearing, you know, in, in school that oh wrestling's wrestling's bad. Like it was cool to like wrestling because, you know, they were kind of pushing the envelope back then. And I, you know, I thought it was just kind of, you know, oh this is cool. This it looked like fire and ice to me because the Undertaker came down with his the lightning bolts and the the blue light, and then there was Kane with the red light. I just thought it was, you know, more a show. And then the next match they sh- it was uh, Shawn Michaels and Stone Cold and Triple H comes to the ring and right before he comes to the ring he kind of gives the middle finger to the camera and that was kind of like oh maybe this is because i'm eight years old you know i'd never mm. seen anything like that i thought it was oh my mom will never let me watch this <laughs> <laughs> so you like you came in on like a very theatrical time for for pro wrestling absolutely yeah in mm. the in the high point i would say i got into wrestling when when wrestling was cool and everyone wore their degeneration x shirts and mm-hmm. you saw austin 316 shirts on the streets everywhere and i just kind of never got out of it you know i all my friends at one point were into it and it was the thing to do and we would all wrestle in the backyard and then when everyone kind of like you know got out of it and went you know their own way and kind of started picking up new interests i just kind of stuck with it and just never never left me which is a good thing a good thing you know Mm -hmm. definitely Mm -hmm. because i ended up here but Right here on this couch with <laughs> right uh, here. the tens with of the, people, with the huge audience, and, and, with the huge audience right hanging now. out here. <laughs> so wait, wait, okay, there they are, there they are hanging out over there. So, um, but uh, so, so is this something that you kind of pursued and kind of thought, you know, how can I, you know, were you trying to figure out a way to be part of this, or were you absolutely, uh, yeah? When when I was little, even to this day, my dad has been a singer and entertainer. He's been in oldies bands since before I was born. Um, all around Pittsburgh and, you know, surrounding areas. And when I was about two, I started going on stage with him with an unplugged microphone and I would sing on stage and I thought it was the coolest thing. And, you know, I thought my dad was a big deal. And, uh, from that point up until about seven, eight, nine, I, the only thing I wanted to do with my life, I was going to be a singer and that's what I wanted to be. And I was going to be a singer. And then um, when I got introduced to pro wrestling, it was like instant. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to be a pro wrestler now. So, mm-hmm. uh, I kind of switched from you know, being a singer to a pro wrestler is kind of huge, drastic change. Um, w- that's what I wanted to do all through high school. Uh, 
10th grade, 11th grade, I started, you know, working out, played football, uh, was in the gym every day. And, uh, my senior year of high school, I think I was like 170 pounds and, you know, and that's at being in the gym every day. And I mm-hmm. thought, you know, I, I mean, this, maybe I, I, you know, this isn't something that I could pursue with my size, but now looking at it now, I, you know, that size now would have been golden. So right, uh, <laughs> right. It's, kind of, it's, it's kind of the right, right size, wrong, yeah, wrong right era. Now. Right. Um, but I kind of decided, you know, I, I definitely still wanted to be involved in wrestling somehow. I wanted to get in the business somehow, uh, even if it wasn't a wrestler. And it just kind of fell into place that all these years of backyard wrestling and mm-hmm. uh, re- playing with my action figures. And it was just I got a feel for commentating while I was playing with the figures. And whenever guys were wrestling in the backyard, I would do the commentary while I was filming. And it was, it's kind of funny. It's bad to watch back now because I have all these matches that we wrestled in and all the other guys matches seem so much better because I'm the one filming it and I'm the one on commentary but then my match is just silent because they're just filming no one's on commentary so you know <laughs> you were you were, you were like the, the 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 hand that did all the background yeah, stuff that, yeah absolutely and that left nobody for, uh-huh. for, for your side that caused a lot of fights too because everyone else was oh let's go over to Nick's house we could wrestle and it was fun mm-hmm. uh, we could jump around I had a pole we would throw each other into the pole but I took it so seriously where mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. guys are screwing around, messing up, you, you know, why are you laughing? And, and it, back in, you know, back then we record on a video camera and I would go home with the footage and I had two VCRs stacked on top of each other. <laughs> yeah, you know where I'm going with I, this. Yeah, and I would bit, edit bit the footage days, from, yep. the, v, from yep. the one tape to the other tape and I'm pausing and hitting record. So it's paused on the screen to edit out somebody laughing or, you know, somebody messing up a move. And and now looking back on it, it's like, I wish I had all that stuff. Somebody can do all that stuff on the phone now. Uh, well, you know, they would, like, take two yeah. iPhones, pull them together, yeah. iMovie it, and you're... And it's just like so, so different now because I remember it's so funny to watch, so ridiculous. Like we would wrestle in a basement and, uh, you know, the couch would be the ropes and I'd stand on the ropes and I'd hold my arms up looking at the crowd, which is the corner of the wall, which looks so ridiculous. You know what I mean? You, and didn't, now, have a, you didn't have a cardboard stand up. I didn't Roman have, Reigns I didn't have like Roman have. Reigns behind me. No, no. no. But, um, but now it's like, that's almost the cool thing is like these underground wrestling matches where no one's watching and you just have to find them on the internet and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I like to think we, you know, we were, we were ahead of the times. It, this is before <laughs> the backyard wrestling yeah. we're at with M dog and Josh yeah. prohibition, right? Pretty much. So did you, when you saw those, were you like, Oh, they store, they store shit. <laughs> no, I just, I just, you know, I, I wouldn't have had any way to get it out there back mm-hmm. then when I, I had no idea how to send my stuff out or how to get it watched. So it was me and my friends and my mom and dad who I made sit down and I'll oh, watch this move. It's awesome. Watch what? me. You know. Hey mom and dad, watch me do dangerous shit. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so, and of course he went from there and, 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 you know, the commentating, like how did, um, I mean, there's a certain point where I think we leap here because uh, I, I think yeah. the big, the big, and, 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 you know, of course you've talked on other podcasts about this. You ended up, as you can see on on uh, on Twitter, uh, a uh, you know, you with a WWE microphone in your hand. Yeah, that was kind of crazy. Um, after high school, you know, I decided I wanted to pursue it. I went to Robert Morris uh, University for communications and broadcasting, and I did um, their their TV you know program, which was shown throughout the, uh, the moon township area and throughout the, you know, the syndicated school, whatever, you know, in the dorm rooms or whatever, um, wrote for the newspaper, did a couple of things, uh, talked to a couple news stations and immediately when I started, gra- when I graduated, I started sending out demo tapes because I started sending out demo tapes when I was 15 years old. Mm-hmm. And it was surprising because I, I sent out demo tapes to WWE, to ring of honor, to TNA, to indie you know, places. And the only company that ever got back to me was WWE, which is so <laughs> weird. Like I sent stuff wait, to, wait, 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 swear to God. So, so I have the letters. The only one that thought I was worthwhile was WWE. I don't, I don't even know if it was that, but it's like, I sent stuff to ring of honor, CZW, like IWC. I contacted yeah, IWC yeah. and nothing ever came of it. And I got letters back from WWE. The first time they said, um, you seem, you seem like you have a passion for this, but you have no education, you have no experience. So I ended up going to a raw taping and I stayed after till they were breaking down the ring and I hung out and I made my way down to the front there. And I talked to Justin Roberts, who was ring announcing at the time. And I said, listen, I, I really want to do this. What do I have to do? And he basically said, what I did, I have a degree in communications. 
He said, um, there's everybody gets here a different way. He said, everybody has their own way of making it here. But I'm going to tell you right now, they won't even take a second look at you if you don't have a degree. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like, okay, that's well, it, uh, really, that's he, interesting. He told me that straight up. He said, you know, you could have all the experience in the world and, um, the, the degree really helps. And I remember the first time I met Joe Dombrowski, me and him talked about things and, um, he told me the first time meeting him, he said, you know, after all my years and all my experience of everything I'm doing, you have a better shot to make it just because of that degree. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was real eye opening because Joe's been everywhere and Joe's done everything. You know, mm -hmm. he's actually become a good friend of mine. Um, but like I said, yeah, I sent demo tapes to everybody and WWE would send me back. You know, you don't have experience. You don't have this. So, uh, I graduated, I uh, got my degree and the next week I was sending out stuff again. Look, I, I got my degree. I'm ready to go. You know, let's, let's do this. And uh, it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. Um, so next it was, well, you have a degree, but you still have no experience, um, with wrestling or television media. So I started talking with news stations, um, started doing, you know, writing more, you know, getting stuff out and, um, I ended up getting married, had a little girl who's three now. Um, I was about at the time where I said, you know what, this might, this might just not happen for me. You know, this might, you know, I tried, you know, I did a, I, you know, I did a lot. It just not, might not happen. So, um, almost at the point of just moving on and I see that WWE announced that they are having a tour of the performance center online, you know, sign up here and. You know, if you're selected, you get to come and tour the performance center. Well, right away, I, you know, I, uh, sent away for that and everything. And they sent me a message back saying, well, here's, you know, obviously I got accepted to the thing. I think there was like 20 people that they, there were people from the media. Um, I think Labar was even there the week before doing mm -hmm. a story, but they said there's going to be different people. Yeah, from they had Labar's everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> they had, uh, they said, we're going to do a story covering the performance center media is going to be here, different people. Um, so they sent me this thing that said that I was going to me and these other people that signed up for it and got accepted. were going to be a part of a Q and a with the NXT roster. And we were going to sit through a promo class with, um, with dusty road at the time it was dusty Rhodes. Dusty road actually passed away from the time that I had been accepted to this till the time it happened. So it was going to be a Dusty Rhodes promo class. It ended up being with uh, Ryan Katz, who's awesome. I still talk mm -hmm. to him now. Has a lot of big hand in developing a lot He's of He's somebody who was on a long time ago on the Mayhem show back in the day. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. awesome. That's cool. Um, so, and it said in there, help produce a live NXT show. Now, me reading that, and, I, and it says help produce. I'm thinking in the studio with a switchboard and you know, different, you know, I'll switch to camera two, switch to this, uh, you know, cause I, I, fix that there. <laughs> I, uh, cause I did that in college. So I was like, you know what, if I could get in here and impress them and just maybe just slide in that mm -hmm. I want to be a ring announcer, maybe, you know, they could see me. Mm -hmm. And, um, that, that was all that I had going to this was I booked my flight, I booked our hotel room and, I just flew to Orlando with the intention of someone's going to realize that I can ring announce and hopefully I get a shot to show them because it said you were going to have a Q and a and everything. So at the very least at that Q and a, I was going to raise my hand and say, hey, I want to, I want to ring announce. What do I do? How do I do it? You know? Um, and at the time, you know, looking back on it, it's so funny because my, my demos that I sent in, like I said, I had no experience in a wrestling ring. So my demos I sent in were, in front of a, a black curtain with an unplugged microphone announcing the undertaker and Rob Van Dam and random. This list was like, how could they even take me seriously? You know yeah. what I mean? It was like, so, um, so I went, I went to the performance center and went in a full suit and tie. Like I would, if I was getting in the ring to ring announce. And when I went in, after I went through security, the first person I talked to was Matt Bloom. Who's the head trainer there. Prince Albert, Tensai. Um, First thing, he asked me where I was from. When I said Pittsburgh, he immediately took a liking to me because he played football for Pitt, you know, back in the uh, 90s. Oh, Pitt, you know, oh, my alma mater, blah, blah, blah. So um, he said, oh, you're in a suit, you know, because the other people were in gimmick shirts or some of the media were in their their radio station or their studio, you know, gimmick shirts. Um, he said, what are you doing in a suit? And I said, well, sir, uh, I said, I've been really trying to ring announce, you know, I've sent demos, you know, I've been in touch with 
ABC, you know, whoever I've talked to. And this was my opportunity to get face to face with you and, and, you know, show you what I want to do. Well, he said, oh, okay, well, you know, we have this plan, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll put you in front of a green screen later and see how you do. So the day continued, you know, we went into catering and, you know, he said, while, while you're waiting, go through those doors, get something to eat and we'll be with you in a couple minutes. So I walked through the doors thinking it's going to be a room and there's going to be some bagels and I'm going to sit there and, you know, look at my notes and wait for them to come get me. I, I walked through the door. Sami Zayn is there. Finn Balor is there. The, the vaude villains, the revival, Bailey, Nia Jax. This is September, 2015. So everybody that was in Dana Brooke, Ty Dillinger, they're all just there going over spots in their matches and mm -hmm. everything. No, I debuted on raw that we know him as now or anything like no, that. No, 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 no. Yeah. They were all still, still in uh developmental at the time. I, I shouldn't say developmental in NXT. Uh, so I sat down and I didn't know who to talk to, where to sit next to. I actually sat next to Sami Zayn and Finn Balor. It's kind of weird. Uh, I ended up talking to Sami Zayn about hockey because my wife's a big hockey fan. So me and Sami Zayn were talking about hockey. Uh, from there, we sat through the promo class with Ryan Katz. And a couple of the guys got up and did their promos for everybody, which was cool to see. Now, after this, uh, Ryan Katz, I, I don't know if it was to see who, who, had, who had the guts to do it or not. But Ryan Katz after said, hey, you know, who wants to come up and cut a promo for everybody? And the whole time, I'm, I'm thinking of myself what I'm going to say because I knew he was going to ask that. And I knew when he asked that, I wanted to get up. So I got up and um, somebody else beat me to it. And somebody else cut a promo about um, how this is a dream come true for me to meet my favorite superstars. And look at me, I'm in a WWE ring and blah, blah, blah. So when I got in the ring, I cut a promo as me trying to sell myself for them to sign me. I, I said, you know, this is cute. You guys think that this is the biggest day of your life, meeting all your heroes and getting a picture in the WWE ring. Well, meanwhile, I've been trying to get here my whole life. You know, I've been sending demos and I've been doing this. But meanwhile, this guy gets a spot before me and this guy who was, you know, a Disneyland American Idol game show host got a spot before me and blah, blah, blah. So afterwards, right away, Sarah Del Rey pulls me aside. She's like, hey, man, that was a really good promo. Yeah, that was really good. So um, start talking to them. Matt Bloom pulls me aside. Says, hey, man, you know, that, that was pretty good. We have a live show, NXT show tonight. Would you like to ring announce some of the show? So now me, now when my wife, Lindy, dropped me off there, because she wasn't even allowed to come. It was just me. I wasn't mm -hmm. allowed to bring anybody anything. So she has no idea what's going on. And now I'm getting told that I'm going to ring announce this NXT event. So my whole life is complete because I'm thinking, oh my, I'm going to ring announce this. If this is the last thing I ever do in wrestling, I've lived it, I've done it. So they give me the card and they don't tell me what I'm going to announce. They just give me the card. So we walk out. I sit at the timekeeper's table with the other announcers. And it was the second match. They came up, uh, a PA guy or whatever came up and said, all right, you're going to announce the next match. It's it's Billy Kay and Peyton Royce who are on NXT every week now, mm -hmm. and they faced uh, Aaliyah and Liv Morgan. So I got in the ring. I ring announced the match. Uh, Greg Hamilton, who's the SmackDown ring announcer, took my phone before I got in the ring, took a bunch of pictures of me in the ring. So this, I, I was set. I, I had done it. I got out of the ring, cloud nine, smiled from ear to ear, sat down. I thought, all right, my life's complete. Well, then they came to me a couple matches later. You want to announce the next match, which was Ty Dillinger and somebody else. Then I announced Alexa Bliss and Bailey for the NXT women's title. So I'm like, man, this is awesome. This is more than I ever could have dreamed of. I'm so mm -hmm. glad I did this. So afterwards, the show's over, and uh, they actually interviewed me for a segment on the WWE Network. It's on this week in WWE for whatever week that was. Um so afterwards, you know, that's it. It's the end of the, the the show, the end of my tour, whatever. So I'm going to fly back to Pittsburgh and that's going to be the end of this. So I made sure to go up to Matt Bloom afterwards and ask him, you know, I said, I really want to do this. You know, I got a little taste of it. What do I have to do now? And he said, are you working any indies? And I said, no, I said, no indies will take me seriously because as I found out later, indies, either they don't want to pay you or they have their buddy that'll do it for free. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm thinking... You know, I was in the WWE ring. I should be the, you know, they should want me. You know, it doesn't work that way. 
So he said, uh, a couple weeks, we'll send you some stuff and we'll get you rolling. So even if that was just lip service, that's all I, I needed to hear. So I was, I was happy. We flew back to Pittsburgh a couple weeks later. Um, they, they sent me headshots of me, video clips of me, all this stuff. And they said, start sending this to indie, indie companies. So, um, I sent it out to every local indie I could find again, TNA ring of honor. Mm -hmm. And I actually got an email back from not an email. I keep saying email, a tweet from Daniel Hooven, the, uh, <laughs> yeah. who is in the chat, by the way. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I get a tweet from Daniel Hooven and he says, Hey, have you ever heard of IWC? And I said, yeah, actually, uh, I don't know how, how I got in contact with them. Somebody had told me that IWC was looking for a new ring announcer. And this is, I guess, when Pedro had left. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know who it was or how it came about, but somebody said they knew Plummer, Justin Plummer. And they said, he's looking for a ring announcer. You should really contact them. So I contact them, never heard anything back. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, there's my answer. Well, when Hooven asked me, have you ever heard of IWC? I told him, I said, yeah, I actually reached out to them. I never heard back. And he said, I think you should send them your stuff again. So I don't know if Hooven talked to Plummer or what, but I sent them my stuff. Hey, you, might, you might have sent it in before Justin took over. So it might have been a advantage. I think it might have been so. still when Chuck. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, I got a, I got a message back from Plummer the next day mm -hmm. and he said, wow, man. You, uh, and <laughs> it's actually funny now, if he sees this, he's probably going to laugh because I think Plummer with my pic with my NXT pictures and stuff thought I was a bigger deal than I was. Mm -hmm. Cause I said, Hey, I just did this NXT show. I'm trying to get a, you know, my name out there. Would you be interested in using me? And the email he sent me is so funny. I still have it. He says, yeah, man, you know, we'd love to bring you in, but the only problem is the money in indie wrestling isn't going to be what you're used to being paid. <laughs> like Plummer thought I was a big deal. You know what I mean? And meanwhile, I had done this one NXT show and he said, it's not going to be what you are used to getting paid. Yeah. So, um, I said, that's okay, man. You know, I still just want to get my name out there. So this was in November. He told me to visit winner takes all, which was December of 15. I visited, hung out backstage, talked to a couple people. And then by January, 2016, I was, I was ring announcing and doing commentary and, doing everything so kind of just kind of just fell into place mm -hmm. but but i still think if it wasn't for that that nxt visit i would have never it, never been noticed it, it definitely um it, you know it, it definitely gets definitely gets you noticed like the, mm -hmm. the, the 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 WWE microphone in your in your hand uh it was asked some questions uh coming in from the chat room matt, matt carlin's is asking if you've ever met anybody else on the indies who's gotten this kind of support from wwe like you know this early i guess um it's hard. It's hard to say because out of the announcers that I know and out of the referees, I know a lot of guys are getting work, but not so much with WWE. And it, and I don't know, like I talk to people from WWE a lot and, but I don't go and tell people, Hey, I talked to so-and-so yesterday. Just like people don't come up to me and say, Hey, I, I talked to WWE. They want to use me for this. So I don't know, you know, a lot of people could be talking to WWE. I'm sure yeah. a lot of people, I mean, obviously Britt's been on raw. So Britt Baker's obviously talking to them. There's a few people I know. Um, my friend Joe McCoy, who refs up at uh, PCW in Cleveland, he's been on ring of honor a lot. So a lot of guys are getting opportunities, but as far as announcers go, I, I don't really, I don't really know too many announcers. I mean, mm -hmm. there's me and Pedro who's kind of, in and out, Pedro kind of comes around whenever you know he sees fit. He's on Pedro time. Yeah, oh, and, he, and he's and he's earned that. <laughs> he's, he's earned to that. Be. He's, he's been around forever. I just I actually just worked the show with Pedro this weekend. Great guy. Mm -hmm. But um, like I said, other than like me, Pedro, Kitch, uh, Hank Hudson that announces for PWX, I don't really I haven't really interacted with a lot of people, mm -hmm. so I I can't really answer that. What is a well? I, there was actually a good note on that because uh, we were just at Gary Capetta's show yeah, on yeah, Saturday yeah. night. Uh, which you were helping out with. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like, well, yeah, I don't run into him because you only need one announcer, right? So, you know. <laughs> that was funny. Because they're like, I got, I got the looks from uh, Palace and Plummer and everybody there. Uh, that's a good thing about Plummer, man. Like, he gave he gave me an opportunity. Whenever I came in, he said, well, we already have a ring announcer. We, had, we have Dave yeah, Kitch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he said, maybe you could do some commentary. So I did commentary. I did backstage stuff. And I like doing that. I like doing everything. I like being a part of the show any way I can. But, my favorite, my favorite thing to do is ring announcing. I love ring announcing. I love being in the ring. I love being in front of people. And Justin Plummer's given me every show. He gives me my my share of stuff to announce. And mm -hmm. 
Uh, he's he's given me a lot of opportunities, and a lot of opportunities have come because of IWC. I started working um, boxing shows and things like that. That they say, "Hey, we saw footage of of this. We need a guy. Can you come in?" And that would have never happened without without Justin. So I'm I'm big time big time fan of Justin Plummer certainly, for that. Certainly. Uh, also, uh, you know, kind of talking back to that that, that WWE experience. <laughs> Bobby really really wants to know um, <laughs> how is Billy Kay. She was cool. Uh, I, I didn't really talk to Billy Kay too much. What's surprising is who I talked to the most was Nia Jax. Nia nice. Jax was a cool girl. She's mm-hmm. very genuine. And it's funny because I think she kind of felt bad for me, uh, which was which, which I'll get to. I Like I said, I thought that I might have gotten an opportunity to ring announce. So I had the card here. And a lot of these guys I've seen on TV, but a lot of these people have not been on TV before. Like I said, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce hadn't been on TV yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Liv Morgan was still working under her real name, Gianna Daddio. And um, Aaliyah was still working under her real name, Noof. So I, they hadn't been on TV. So I'm kind of, you know, all these other guys are trying to get autographs and get pictures taken with the wrestlers. And I'm kind of in the corner like, I'm here to work. on my phone looking up you know, r- info on these people. Cause I don't know who I'm going to ring announce. And Nia Jax kind of came over to me and I th- looking back on, it, I think she kind of thought I was by myself and kind of came over and was like, hi, I'm Nia. Nice to meet you. And like <laughs> got her lunch and sat down and talked to me. And she was the coolest girl, you know what I mean? And this is before she had even been on TV They, you know, so she was, you know, explaining to me who she was. Um, but like I said, Billy Kay, Peyton Royce, they were the first pro wrestling match I've ever ring announced. So when I came to the back after that, um, I didn't talk to them too much. You know, I'm not going to lie and say, you know, they were right there and we talked for hours and became buddies, but, um, you know, they hugged me. They said, Oh, wow, that was really good. You know, how, what, what Indies do you work? How long have you been working? And I said, well, that was, that was my first time, you know? And, oh, really? And it's actually, it's cool because I, um, I tweeted them. They had that, uh, they were in the fatal four way at the NXT takeover, um, in January. So I, tweeted them and said, Hey, good luck tonight. You know, you'll always be my first match that I ever announced because here and there they'll like tweets that I send out or stuff. So it's, it's cool that they, they notice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it definitely seems like that, that we, we found this, even our own tweeting with mayhem show, like that NXT generation yeah. really wants to respond to those. Kind that, of that NXT uh, locker room is, is very, because they're still trying to get support too, because yeah, they're, they're, they're touring the world and, and everything, but a lot of people still don't know who they are. Uh, people know who Bobby Roode is, obviously. People mm-hmm. know who Shinsuke Nakamura is. But a lot of these guys that are on NXT every week, even though they're on NXT, doesn't mean that people are seeing them because people don't watch every NXT episode. Right, right. Or, or maybe they don't, like, maybe came in, you know, from something else and not on the indies or yeah, not absolutely. that Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, at the time, uh, there's a guy, Tino Sabatelli, who's... Uh, here he's, he gets TV time here and there. He's I a, think he was, was he featured on breaking around? I think he was. Yeah. yeah he's a uh, former NFL player yeah. and he, no wrestling experience at all. His brother actually wanted to try out for NXT. His brother got a tryout. They brought them both in and Tino ended up getting signed. So mm-hmm. he had no wrestling experience, but he's coming from the outside and a guy that it, like you said, he was featured on the breaking ground show. You see him in his, in his, um, segment on there he has custom made suits and everything because he still has all that money from the nfl Mm -hmm. so the the money they're making every week you know doesn't mean anything to him whereas some of these guys even in nxt they're not making buttloads of money it's it still is you you said maybe not mention that but it is it is developmental it's technically it's technically developmental you hate to say that because of how many i'm sure a a shinsuke or a finn or you know are, are, are in on better deals because of where they came yeah, from, I know but, that. I know yeah. when I was there, they have different classes of training. I know mm. there's different trainers that, uh, you know, Norman Smiley hosts one training class and there's a beginner class and there's a, you know, an accelerated class. And I know that guys like Shinsuke Nakamura and Bobby Roode, uh, they don't have to go to training every day. You know what I mean? They're not going to, they're not going to show up and get trained by Norman Smiley every day. Um, but there are guys that, and I know this because when I was there, Samoa Joe was in NXT and Samoa Joe wasn't at the performance center. Samoa Joe wasn't showing up at eight o'clock to go to promo class with Ryan Katz, you know? So some people get special treatment, but, um, it, it, they definitely, they definitely appreciate the support because I remember 
for weeks after that, I was still interacting with a lot of the NXT people from then. Um, Bailey, uh, even Greg Hamilton. I remember there's a, a scene on Breaking Ground where they kind of they do a, uh, a shot of Baron Corbin on his motorcycle, mm-hmm. and I was there for that. That was shot that day, and uh, Baron Corbin actually came out and was talking to me outside, and they grabbed him to go shoot that. Which is pretty cool, because you know what I mean. Like see, seeing those pictures on Facebook, no one would know that Greg Hamilton took those pictures, or mm-hmm. that you know the one. There's a picture that I actually used in a demo, and it's me standing outside of the performance center, and that was taken after I was done with the performance center. That picture was taken by Baron Corbin. You know, it's just like how cool is that? Now that guy's going to be on WrestleMania. Absolutely. Um, so chat's going pretty, pretty wild out there. A lot of people are out there. Um, Jackson's <laughs> Jackson wants to, oh, well, first oh, of geez. all, first of all, Billy says there's hope for Jackson yet from the sounds of things at the performance center. Um, <laughs> also Bobby FJ town says, uh, for Nia Jackson, another podcast that her name, her full name might be uh, Nihilus Jackson. So, <laughs> so there you go. Um, Jackson, uh, Hey, um, Hey Lendl, you ugly mug. Uh, who's your, who's your favorite rookie of the year to interview? He's doing this on purpose because I put him over on another podcast a couple weeks ago because the guy <laughs> hey, asked hey, me, "Hey, hey, Jackson's getting on billboards in West Virginia I just saw next that we, to Ryback." We were just at dinner, and I literally pulled this up on my phone. I said to my wife Lindy, "I said he is never gonna let this die. It's a it's a billboard of Ricky Steamboat, Ryback, and Jackson Argos." <laughs> and I, I mean, he's the hometown kid. He's from Wheeling, you know. I mean. I, I love Jackson Argos. I will say that. Uh, I Like I said about the other podcast, the guy was asking me about doing promos. Yeah. And I said, it's fun to do promos if the guy I'm interviewing wants to do it. Because some guys, you know, hey, we have a promo tonight. Awesome. What are we doing? You know, what, what am I saying? What are we doing? Do you have a script? You just bullet points what? And some guys, hey, man, we have a promo tonight. And they roll their eyes. Oh, well, I don't want to do a promo, dude. So it's fun if someone wants to do promos and Mm -hmm. he brought up the fact that promos and being in front of a camera helps your ability to get seen because if you're sending out a demo tape and you have 15 minutes of wrestling footage, the guy could watch it and think, oh, well, he doesn't have it in the ring. He's okay, but he just doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. But if you send a 30 second promo And the guy says, oh man, he could talk. We could work with him. We could develop him. And some people don't see that. And I brought him up as the opposite where I said, a lot of guys, their in ring work is, is crisp and they're, they're great in ring, but then you put them in front of a camera and they freeze. And then I, I flipped it and I used him as an example, not to bury him, but to say there are guys, the opposite where they're not so good in the ring, but they're awesome on the mic. And I'm not saying he's not good in the ring. He's just green. He's just getting his feel. He's like six months in. That's what I said. He's only been wrestling for six months. And like, like, like he said, I won't even say that you said, like he said, he's the, uh, he's the rookie of the year. Obviously, he's making waves. He's on Instagram, Twitter. He's everywhere. I see him on everything. He gets more social media interaction than anybody I know, except for maybe like RJ City or somebody like that. Um, but I'll, I know he, I know he's watching this, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, pat him on the back. I do like Jackson Argos. I like working with Jackson Argos. I just uh, – I just I, – I, we'll go to the next question. <laughs> We'll just stop that. That's it. That's it. I put him over. Uh, he's, he's satisfied. He's probably going to click off. He after says that. his picture is not not uh, his his picture is not big enough um, on there. Hey, eh? well, you know, there's the big guy. Um, <laughs> Jackson Argo's picture on the billboard will draw uh, convicts from Moundsville to the show. So we're talking about the IWC High Stakes Show happening on the on the I believe this is the seventh of April. If you guys yeah. want to check it out, iwcwrestling.com. All right. Uh, so what? So you've been at this for a little bit. You've been on the announcing with IWC and uh, for what is this? So just over a year. Yeah, a little part, over right? a year. Yeah. yeah. So what is uh, the best and the worst thing about working the indie so far? Um. The best thing about working the indies is getting to work with your heroes, getting to work with people that you watched on TV, um, sharing a locker room with Billy Gunn, Booker T, Scott Hall, uh, Hardcore Holly, EC3, Tommy Dreamer. In your first year. In my first year. You know what I mean? My second show with IWC, my second show. I've been in the business a month. I ring announced Booker T. I ring announced Tantanka. 
Uh, I had I read a, a statement in the ring from Jeff Jarrett. You know what I mean? I'm rubbing elbows with all these guys that a couple of years ago I was playing with your action figures. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? I, I, I did a backstage interview with Shelton Benjamin. You know, my second show in. It's just like, that's the best thing about the indies is, is the opportunities that come up that you're not expecting. Now, the, the perfect example was that House of Hardcore show we did in October. Uh, Justin Plummer made it very clear to us that we're probably not going to be on this show. We're, we're basically promoting this show for Tommy Dreamer. He's going to come in with his guys, with his crew, and we're going to put on IWC Presents House mm-hmm. of Hardcore. Mm-hmm. So I didn't give it a thought, and I came to the building, and they, he didn't have a ring announcer. So I got thrown into ring announcing House of Hardcore. So on that show, Tommy Dreamer, Tony Nese, who I think got signed to WWE like the week after. You know, all those names... And you're getting thrown in and it's been released on DVD. So you don't know how many mm-hmm. people are watching that. So mm-hmm. I'd say those are the best things. The opportunities getting to rub elbows with, um, you know, guys that you've seen on TV. But uh, the worst thing about the indies to me is me- is meeting guys that aren't 100% in it. I've met a lot of guys that I have a full-time job during the week and I do this on the weekends because I can make a couple extra hundred bucks and I'm a big dude and I can get away with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? If it's not your passion, it's not your passion. You can make some money doing it and you know, more power to you. But this is such a business. And I know with the, the, the miles you drive and the, you know, the, 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 the work that the sacrifice, you know, that they always talk about, you know, that you go into, you don't do this for the money or to be famous or anything. You do it because this is what I wanted to do when I was eight years old. So I might not be on SmackDown. I might not be on raw, but I'm in a ring ring announcing Tommy dreamer ring announcing uh, DJ Z who's on, you know, TV every week, Mm -hmm. you know, guys like that. And it's fun to me, you know, it's fun to me to, to do that, but to see somebody that when I go to the back and tell them, Hey, we have a promo tonight and they roll their eyes at me or, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just that, that that just kind of rubs me the wrong way. That's none of my business because I'm sure I've been involved in things where somebody opposite of me has been a hundred percent in it and I'm just in it for the paycheck or to get mm-hmm. my name out there. So I can't, a perfect example is the boxing announcing. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. And the boxing announcing is cool. It's awesome money. I make great money boxing announcing. There's a lot of money in pro boxing, big crowds, uh, you know, the Meadows Casino, uh, where I've you know ring announced a couple of times, huge crowds. But um, the promoter is just not very nice to me. Just sees me as you know treats me like the guy that runs the Ferris wheel at the county fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, doesn't you know? And the the woman that books me is awesome. She's a sweet lady. But the 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 promoter is just very. I'm in the ring and he's in the third row. And I ring announced something and I know I did something wrong because he stands up and he throws his papers on the ground. And I'm thinking, what did I, what did I do wrong? You know, well, he comes up to me afterwards and tells me that I pronounced this guy's name wrong. And you're lucky that his camp didn't get in my face for pronouncing his name wrong and all this stuff. So I felt bad about it because here I am thinking, driving home thinking, wow, I, I really pronounced that guy's name wrong and mm-hmm. I probably ruined his night, you know? so. The next boxing show I did, that guy was on the card again. So I made sure to go up to him and apologize. And he probably didn't even remember it, you know. Mm-hmm. I went right up to him, shook his hand. I said, I'm so sorry, man. I pronounced your name wrong last time. And he said, what'd you, what, how'd you pronounce it? And I said, I don't want to say his name because mm-hmm. I don't want to, if the promoter's watching this, I don't want to get in trouble. Um, but anyway, I had pronounced his name the right way. Mm-hmm. And uh, the promoter didn't know his name. Another, another instance, I announced somebody re- fight, re- almost said wrestling, fighting out of the blue corner when they were actually fighting out of the red corner, but my run sheet said blue corner. Mm-hmm. So that's not my fault. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, that's not mm-hmm. my fault. So I remember the first show, he's just on me. Every announcement I made, my, I wasn't loud enough. I wasn't this enough. I wasn't this enough. And the whole time I'm thinking, I hate this. I can't wait till this is over so I can get my money and never come back here. And I've said this many times, I get up after the show, I get my check, I shake his hand and he says, Hey, you know, good job tonight. We have another show in a couple months. You coming back? I said, absolutely. I'll be, I'll be back. (laughs) And I'm actually booked for them next month too. So nice. it's just, I just, 
Learning the ropes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quick story too. I, when you're in the wrestling business, you're taught to wipe your feet when you go in the ring. Mm-hmm. Wipe your feet before you get in the ring. I wipe my feet every every match. I did that in boxing. That's not a boxing thing, apparently. Five, six people asking me, "What's wrong? Why are you wiping your feet? What's wrong with you? You got you got gum on your shoe. What's wrong with you? You know." Well, like, nobody's supposed to be on the ground, right? So <laughs> I guess. I guess. I'm just. Tr- I'm trying so hard. It's not working out. No, you, well, yeah, I think nobody, <laughs> nobody's grappling. Nobody's no. laying on the mat for, for a minute no. at a time. You know, no. it, it, it makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Where can people find you online? Uh, I'm on Facebook. I'm uh, Twitter at Nick Lendl. Um, I don't do the in- Instagram thing. Can't get into it. I got to, you know, smack myself to remember to tweet sometimes. So hard. You'll, you'll see on my Twitter a lot of times is in one day I send out a bunch of tweets and then I won't tweet for three weeks after that. Cause I just, I forget about Twitter. I'm, I'm, I need Jackson Argos's social media manager to help me get out there because I'm always on Facebook and then I forget to do, you know, I'm like, Oh man, I've had, I've I've announced three shows since I've tweeted like, Oh, here's my show this week. Here's my show next week. You know, I get out there and be like Mondays be like, and uh, get your, get your picture out there. Yeah. Yeah, He does Tuesday team storm day. We could do, (laughs) Tuesday, Team Storm Day. Wednesday, Man Crush, Jack Pollock's Beard Day. Thursday, <laughs> Thursday, Man Crushes, R- or R.C. Dupree's Glasses. I, I wear a suit and tie and with a di- with different colors. I don't have that many. I don't have that wide of a, a scope to go with. It's like I mean, Nick Lendl Monday. Here's Nick Lendl Tuesday. And Nick Lendl third. No, 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 no one wants to see the ring announcer. Try it for a week and see what happens. You never know. <laughs> no one wants you to see the know. ring announcer. Give it a shot. Experiment. <laughs> Experiment. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And check him out, of course, with the International Wrestling Cartel at IWCWrestling.com and playing shows over at IndieWrestling.us. Um, including you'll be there uh, for these upcoming shows on the 6th and the 8th, I believe, of, of 7th April. 7th and 8th. 7th and 8th. 7th and 8th. 7th and 8th of April down in West Virginia, Wheeling, West Virginia, and up in Meadville, Pennsylvania. Uh, big, big shows. The biggest of the year as far as uh, uh, Ricky Steamboat, uh, Ryback on both shows, the Hardy Boys and uh, Ken Anderson or Mr. Anderson on, on the uh, Meadville show. So please go check it out um and uh and check out everything else wrestlingmayhemshow.com subscribe to this on all the outlets wherever you want an audio or video version of this and uh keep an eye out on the facebook page or live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com uh for the live streams as well thank you so much nick for joining us and please everybody out there support indie wrestling oh. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.